I'm Anupama Maram. Um, so I've work, been working with the Harvard Catalyst team. Um, and these are our team members. Um, just want to shout to Perminder. He's also our QA lead. Um, so this is the internal team that's been working on um, the new UI. Um, so this is the, I think we're calling it I2B2 uh, Classic. So this is the interface that you're probably familiar with. Um, and it's used at over 200 plus institutions worldwide. Um, so we had about five goals when we wanted to um, start this project. The number one goal was to replace the I2B2's um, Yahoo user interface. So there was a lot of dependencies on um, the, the YUI's code libraries. And so by um, updating them, we wanted to be able to add new functionality. Um, and this is just a list of all the different tech stack that we replaced YUI with. Our second goal was to unify both I2B2 and Shrine. So a couple of years ago, we um, redid the entire Shrine UI. Um, so I think about two to three years ago at this point. Um, so Shrine and I2B2 are two different web clients. Um, I2B2, you get a count at your local institution, and Shrine is a federated network. So you can run those same questions um, across a network and get results across the country. So one of the largest instances of a Shrine network is the Enact project. And so like Griffin mentioned, the Shrine UI, we um, did a lot of work with the I2B2 community, um, getting a lot of feedback. We iterated, we did a lot of landscape analysis. That's sort of how we arrived at that new UI. Um, and it was pretty successful, but we weren't able to just, um, just apply the same interface to um, I2B2, and that's because there's differences in the technology stack, um, and then both applications actually have different set of features. Um, so this is sort of just a quick, quick uh, screen grab of the Shrine's UI. So it's very different, and Shrine did used to look like I2B2. Um, and then the last few goals were to support the legacy plugins. There was a lot of work in the community to build out these really robust analytic capabilities. So in our new UI, we wanted to make sure we were continuing to support the legacy plugins, but we also built a framework for users to create new plugins. Um, and Nick will talk about that um, later this afternoon. Of course, we wanted to make it easy to install. So just the user interface itself um, doesn't require any server changes. It's just uh, limited to the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files. Um, and then we wanted to make sure the tech stack that we use allows for future capabilities. So um, sometimes you might want to integrate different applications. This is Jupyter Notebook and be able to easily drag and drop between the I2B2 interface and to Jupyter Notebook. Um, and finally, we've been working on this for the past year and a half-ish. So our goal was to make sure all the features that are currently in I2B2 classic make it to the new web client, but they might look slightly different. Um, so now I'll go to the demo. Okay. All right, cool, thank you. Um, so this URL is actually um, publicly available, so you can log on to it, preferably after my demo, and sort of play around with it. So give it a second to log in. All right. Okay. So the one of the most basic use cases for I2B2 is for a researcher to go in and formulate their research question and be able to find a patient count at their own local institution. Um, and so with that in mind, we, when we kind of uh, redesigned this space, we wanted to still keep that one page look and feel. Um, and then we have the three panels. So instead of having the five panels that are collapsed at the top, we dedicated a space for the terms the workspace and the queries, but most of the space has been allocated for the researcher to do that work of constructing out their research question. So we have the find patients tab here. Um, we removed the analysis ooh, tab from um, the header here and put it sort of with the patient tool. So it's kind of the same, similar functionality. Um, and then right below here, we have the query status. So you'll see the results of what you get. Um, and then I'll talk about the terms for right now. So the terms view, one of the things we did was we streamlined both the navigate and the search. 
Um, so you can drill down here and look for your terms in this really clean view. One of the things we do want to work on in a future release is rethinking some of these folder icons. Um, we did change the modifier icons to this tag, so it maybe looks like something you might want to slightly change or modify. Um, so like I said, these queer, the ontology here is sort of like the building blocks. Michelle talked um, a lot about it. So we just wanted to make sure we preserve the hierarchy um, and the relationships between the codes because the path is really important. Um, and of course, there are relationship between some of these higher folders and the nested folders underneath it. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is right click. Um, so this um, options menu applies both to the navigate and the search. And so just to make it a bit faster, I'm just going to disable modifiers for right now. And again, I'm just going to drill down. And we do have the total nums that appear here. So as you're constructing your query, you can get a sense of how many patients are there with that number. And then what I'll do right now is just sort of search for a term. So while it's executing the search up here, I just wanted to point out we have this ability to filter your results. So you can filter by category. So that kind of relates to each of the coding domains um, that you saw in the tree view. Or you can also search by a specific code set. Um, so if I knew I wanted to look at the ICD-10 code, I can enter that specific code um, and it should be able to give my search results. So here are my search results for diabetes. I'm sure you saw the sign that said there's more than 200 results. So by default, we only load 200 results per code domain. So our diagnosis, and then if you keep scrolling down, we have the other root folders here. Um, and you can change that. You can just go to the terms, right click, different right click, oh no. Um, to see the options. I use a Mac, so this is also fun. Uh, just bang on the right side. No. Just... Oh, okay, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyways, this view is um, a slightly different view than what you saw before. So that was sort of a navigate uh, th uh, throughout the tree. Um, this is sort of a truncated view. So it's really trying to give you the path from the root folder to the search term. Um, so say if this is the term I was interested in, but I really wanted to see it in its relative position in the hierarchy, I could just right click. Um, and I'm able to have these options. I can show more information about that specific term. Um, I can see the modifiers that are associated with it, or I can view it back in that tree view. So when I do that, it's gonna automatically open all those folders back in that tree view. So, we really wanted to simplify this because this is sort of the main um, step where users are trying to find those terms. Once they find it, it's pretty easy drag and drop to the right hand side. So what we did here was simplify the, the panel here. So instead of just having all three uh, panels there by default, we wanted the user to focus on building it one step at a time. So when you notice I dragged the concept over, it defaulted to an inclusion group, and then it automatically um, displayed a, another concept group underneath it. And within the concept group, I can specify whether it's an inclusion or an exclusion, and the color changes just to reinforce that idea. Um, if I go here, I can specify a date range for that specific concept. I'm just gonna drag a few concepts over just to show what happens. Um, I can also uh, uh, apply a date range for the entire group. So if I say today, it automatically displays it here. Um, I can remove a date range for a specific concept. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of the constraints you want to put. I mean, of course, you can always specify the number of occurrences that appear. So we kind of wanted to um, make sure that was accessible to the user, but not in their face all the time. So as you just build out um, each uh, panel is related to the previous panel by the AND operator, it, that's the same in I2B2, and then just continue making your way down the list and construct your research question. When you're ready to run your query, just find patients here. You can modify 
the, na the default names that are given, and then you can select any of the different result types you want. So by default, you might be looking for patients, but we also have the demographic breakdowns, we have the advanced custom SQL breakdowns, and some of other um, result sets such as patient set or the timeline. So when you run it, um, it will appear down below um, with the count. Of course, this is zero because I just picked some concepts. And then you can click here to um, populate a report that you can export as a PDF. Um, I also ran some previous queries so you can take a look at what they might look like. So to all your queries, when they, uh, um, after they run, they'll get stored in this previous query list. So you can always look at what you have before, and then by reloading it, you simply drag it over into the name field. So it'll repopulate your concepts and also the number. So in this one, I just ran a simple query. Um, in the next reload, um, I ran it with some breakdowns, so you can sort of see how the breakdown charts look. Um, so we have the charts all here, and then we have the numbers uh, down below here. So that's useful. And then let's see what else we have. So I wanted to uh, show this uh, view, uh, um, concept. So we have a query where I'm trying to find patients with endocrine disorders and insulin. Um, and so uh, it's, this is basically a way you can build out more advanced functionality. So um, this is, you know, find patients with endocrine and insulin. I run that query and then I can reuse that query as a concept. So if I go to, oh, sorry, did, with a slightly different one. Um, if I try to reuse that query, it can save that query as its own concept and then I can add other concepts. So I'm basically creating a panel that has and and or within the same panel. So it allows you to do that. Um, the other piece I wanted to bring up was the temporal queries. Um, so we have the way to, the temporal queries is a way to build out a query that um, runs in a sequential order. So instead of just finding patients um, with concepts anytime in their medical record, you can specify a specific time point that happens. And to do that, you just simply select the when radio button and you'll notice that the color changes to like this yellow orange um, time constraint. And then we have this little icon here so you know there's a timing aspect associated to it. Um, and it's it just really easy, again, you just drag and drop concepts over so I can just show how it looks like if I want to augment it. Um, you can apply a date range, and then um, it, by default, it selects the most basic uh, or pre-filled relationship, and then you can expand this out to select um, how complex you want to define the relationship between events. So you can specify a time gap, um, you can just enter some values here, you can um, specify start date, uh, start date or an end date. Um, so it's really powerful when you're able to have these little um, options to be able to, to really specify the query that you're looking for. Let me clear that out. Let me just reload it with the values so you can see what it looks like. So with this specific one, I was able to find six patients that met this criteria. All right. Um, the other uh, thing I wanted to share was the concept of um, sort of uh, same encounter, same instance, and modifier. So I know I hid the modifiers from the ontology, so let me go back. So like I said, the modifiers, let's take a medication. So I'll talk through this example first. So Griffin had this example in his slides in the old I2B2. Um, UI, so these are modifiers for different medication. It's uh, Capitan, and then I want to find patients that took it um, by a specific dose, a specific frequency, and a route. And so the way you would connect all that information together is this icon here. Um, so by default, when you drag a concept over, um, they're unlinked, so it tells you that the panel timing is independent. 
and then you have the option to link it to either a same instance or a same encounter. And depending on which option you choose, they have slightly different colors and a little E icon for encounter and an I icon for instance. Um, and then if you decide you don't, you wanna treat it as its own independent panel again, you just simply unlink it. So we thought that was sort of a really easy visual way to allow users to know which panels are sort of in its own specific set. Um, one of the things I, let me share a lab value because I don't think I did that yet. So for some of the um, concepts, like such as modifiers, they have uh, values that are associated with it. So when you drag that concept over to the right-hand side, this pop-up appears. And so depending on the concept that it is, you can select, say there's no value, there could be flag values associated with it or specific by values. So in this example, I can say that I want it to be less than or equal to 1,000 and that value automatically gets displayed in the UI. And if I want to edit it, I just click this little um, icon here and it repopulates that view again. And this is a similar view for modifiers um, as well if I wanted to change any of these. It's just the icons different and then you can select your values here. Okay, let me see if I have one more thing I want to talk about. All right. And the last thing I want to talk about was this timeline view. So I'm reloading a query that I've already run. Um, so if you wanted to um, find plugins, you would go to this analysis tool. And um, we built a framework, like I mentioned, for both legacy plugins and new plugins. But to the user, they won't be aware of that. So they'll just see a list of all the plugins that they have access to. Um, and so for one of these examples, I had run a timeline I think I'll try to just run it again. So you can sort of see it in real time. And so you'll see a, a window will pop up here with the timeline and it's automatically running that specific plugin. Um, I think that's all I wanted to demo. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, uh, amazing presentation. So I have a question related to two working groups, both UI and ontology. So in ontology, we just talk about using category theories for complex query. And uh, so in UI systems, can we design some data-driven query system, like uh, by clustering analysis, PCA, or high dimensional uh, uh, dimension reduction system, and. Uh, uh, presentation projection system so people can or uh, using AI system can automatically to query the it will be to be database to pre to find the clues what kind of patients data set points available for data mining and the extraction for uh, downstream analysis uh, so the question is what kind of data is available in the uh, the data driven query system data driven queries yeah. Um, so one of the things that you can do when you're running a query is specify the type of result set that you're interested in. Um, so like I mentioned, there's the uh, demographic breakdowns, which specifies it by gender, vital status, age, or race. Then there's the custom SQL query ones, which um, you can create them. These are just sort of what we have implemented in the past, but that you can configure them to what you would like. Um, patient sets gives you, and encounter sets gives you a list of specific patient records with med their medical record numbers so you can look them up. Um, and then the timeline feature gives a more robust look of the, of the patient's medical um, records and it also provides access to notes if you have the right permissions. Um, and then once you do that, you can use the, the type of analysis tools, like these are just out of the box, but there is a community that has built out a, a lot of these plugin capabilities. And so that's sort of where you would plug it in. Um, you could also extract, take the data out of I2B2 and use it in another application like Jupyter Notebooks. Um, does uh, that answer the question? Uh, some part, yeah. Second question that, can we have a query system to analyze the topology 
of uh, ontology? Oh, um, Michelle, do you want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have the the uh, the Def Clans data quality dashboard is a view into the quality of data, and then we have these some tree visualizations that give you an overview of the ontology to look for um, issues and upgrades of the ontology, looking at differences or finding where you have uh, deficiencies in your code in the ontology compared to other institutions. So this, um, uh, I don't know where, where we would, I guess that's in our enact meetings. I think we were looking in the sum tree visualizations and how that can be used to analyze the ontology. Yeah. Well, we, we, we originally created the sum tree visualization is actually this was a NIH sum supplement to compare two different ontologies and understand differences between them. So the, the boxes above it would kind of indicate you'd overlay two ontologies and it would show you summaries of how many concepts were in one ontology versus the other versus the overlap, um, comparing like ICD-9 to ICD-10. So it was, it was originally for that and then we kind of um, overlaying the data quality metrics on top of it, but there's a bunch of different applications we can use for that same visualization. So I, I just want to make a, a couple of comments, but um, also ask a question as well. So I feel like I've been looking at the I2B2 UI for like 20 years. It's kind of like like living in the same house <laughs> without any like paint. This is this is unbelievable. And I know, um, so it looks great. It looks great. It feels great. But I also know that like it, it's got new underlying technology and all of the old um, components are, have been replaced. So kudos to the team. Is Nick in the room? Nick, can you stand up? Nick, Martini, where's Perminder? The guy with the camera. All right. And you're already standing. And Mark, Mark, can you stand up too? All right. I, 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 actually, a round of applause for this group. I mean, if, if, you, if you can imagine going through like it, I mean, I2B2 is not 20 years old, but pretty close, right? If you can imagine like going through and, and really pulling out all of the functionality and like figuring out what needs to be done and, you know, and also developing it into this, you know, this beautiful um, UI, I think it's, a, it, it's like unbelievable. So great, great job. So I heard yesterday, Jeff Klan, there's, it's the pre, there's a pre-release available now where, on the ITB2 website. I2B2.org slash software. Okay, so there's a link that goes to the demo. Okay, so go to the, go to the, yeah, get, it's all right. Okay, so you can download the software. It's a pre-release, so yeah. it's in really good shape. It's missing a couple little things that we wanted to polish off. Um, I believe I heard that we're committed to polishing off those couple little things to get a final release out by the end of this calendar year. So we'll send a, a note out um, soon. So that's great. And also, Anna Palma, your question, um, documentation for the new yeah. UI? Thank you. I forgot to talk about that. So we did create new documentation. So when you click the little question mark icon, it appears in the tool itself, um, and then you can access it, and it's just a PDF download with some linked um, table of contents, so the screenshot should be all of the, of the new web client, and so um, that's sort of the, the hard copy, and then we do have been in discussions about creating like video clips, so we'll have to figure out where to host them and how to navigate the user towards those, so just like little snippets of how to create queries and run them. Who thinks video clips is a good idea? <laughs> All right. Who does not think video clips is a good idea? All right. 
<laughs> it's public. Yeah, if you just go to yeah dataenclave.net slash web client v2 and then I think there's another URL that Mike set up on that i2b2 website. So the one on the website is yeah, there's two available. Yeah. Yeah, um, just coming uh, how I've been watching this evolve the last couple of years. It's really amazing what they've done. And I think that this is going to be so much easier for new users to understand how to use it and get into it. Um, I've been using the old web client for 15 years, and I'm so used to where things are on the old web client that for me, it feels kind of odd a little bit doing things and building things in this new way. So you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, as we start rolling this out to institutions and getting that feedback of, um, how do you like it? Are there things in here that um, people think should be done maybe or in the older way or in a different way? Um, uh, as I said, it's, it looks great, but it doesn't mean that this thing is perfect. And it's really important and helpful for us to hear um, how you feel about it. Um, as I said, uh, I got to get used to it a little bit and change all the training that I do for, for people. I think it's for the better. Um, uh, but we're, we're still looking to see how we can make this um, even better in the future. So, so if I can piggyback on uh, Griffin's comment, and I think I asked Jeff the question yesterday, sounds like there's a way to uh, have the new UI and the legacy UI coexist so the user can actually pick which one they would prefer to use. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, there's aspects of the classic um, I2B2 interface that we would need, such as the admin interface. So there's still a way, I think from the login page, you should be able to specify, um, it's, it's customizable, so you can put a link there to go to the, to the classic user interface or use the new interface. Is that by user or is that by organization? It's in, I think it's by organization. on the login screen so right here yeah so yeah. on the login screen like right there so it says for classic web client click here you click there and then but if you're an admin and you need to do administration stuff you will have to click on that here because the uh, admin tools have not been incorporated to the new web client yet my understanding though is that we're not going to be you know, maintaining two web clients forever and the new plugins are not going to work on the old web client no, that was my question <laughs> right so, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, so we want we, if, if there was a feature on the old web client that you liked the, the solution would be see if we can incorporate that into the new web client as opposed to maintaining two web clients at your institution. Yeah. I think the query you create, uh, you gave three options, right? One for the instance encounter and it's an independent. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by encounter and what do you mean by instance? Is it like a financial encounter? Uh, yes, yeah, so I think that's the I idea when we worked on it. So um, in, I think we removed in this UI the word finance from from that financial encounter. So it's just an encounter. And I think what it's really doing is looking at that column in the in the table. I don't know if Jeff it, or Griffin want to correct me on that. Um, an instance is more related to modifiers. That's just sort of it's looking at that specific relationship. OK, so. It, this is encounter is it something like the particular visit the the same encounter is the encounter num field in the fact table in the visit dimension so it's useful for saying uh, like it's, it's not equivalent to being in the same visit but it's often pretty close if you're looking for two events that are occurring at the same time or if you're linking it to event type so i'm usually looking at if i want to narrow my diagnoses down to emergency room setting or inpatient setting can join it to the visit table and, and do that 
And then the instance, like Anna Palma said, is how you would handle multiple modifiers together. Both of these things are not great UI. What we did was we basically copying over the functionality from the old web client, but you have to really understand how those things work. And it's not something that's intuitive. And I think we could do much better on that. But these two, same instance, same encounter, are in the old web client um, in a drop down menu. And we put it over here to uh, retain that same functionality. You might have a, a medication might end up being several rows in your fact table. So is the fact that the patient had insulin, another fact that's describing the dose and the route and so on. So there's multiple rows there where they have the same patient number, encounter number, uh, provider number, and what's the uh, difference between them except the modifier stuff. So th that's linking on the, the, the instance. Right, um, same account, right. So this is, this is really, the, the use case for this is when there's multiple rows in the fact table, or really one observation, but to handle the multiple mod modifiers for it. So that, the, the same instance link is really only applicable for the, um, the modifier use case. 